Xcode. Uh, you don't really need Xcode. It's enough if you get command line tools for Xcode. Uh, I'll put the link into a description of this video where to get Xcode command line tools that will run on your Mac. For example, if I go to um, if I go to the App Store and try to download the latest Xcode, I cannot do it because I'm on the Lion instead of Mountain Lion, so it won't work. And sometimes you might run into some trouble there. So look in the description, there will be a link. So the first step in installing Rails uh, would be to install uh, Homebrew. So let's copy that command, go to our terminal, paste that, and run it. Okay, so it said uh, I already installed it. Okay, so don't worry about that. Just copy this command and run it. So let's go ahead and copy uh, our instruction into command line and run it. Okay, press enter to continue. Now we're installing uh, Homebrew. It's going to take a while, so please be patient. Okay, now we're installed. Okay, we can proceed uh, to install some packages with Brew. From Brew. Okay, so we've already done that before. So we get some warnings here and there. Uh, don't worry about that, it's not so important. Okay, we're done. Let's move on to the next step. And just copy that over. Run it. Administrative password. Okay. Okay, now we're going to install RVM. Oh, so sorry. Of course, we don't want to run it with the dollar sign. How, how foolish. This is what happens when you copy paste. Okay, uh, it may take a while, so please, please be patient. I cut out most of the waiting time already. Um, so now, and at this point, it's, it asks you for the password. So just use the password that you use for your computer. Okay, we are now set with RVM. So RVM stands for Ruby Version Manager. So let's go ahead and install Ruby. Okay. So actually, RVM install. And we're not going to install like in the tutorial, we're not going to use um, 193 uh, version. We're going to go for 2.0 version, which is at this moment the latest. Okay, so RVM reload. Okay, and let's install Ruby. Awesome. So uh, let's see uh, RVM list. Let's see what kind, of, what Ruby's, uh, what Ruby versions we have uh, installed. So we have 193 version on this computer, which is very outdated. It's an old version, old version of old version, and now we have uh, a Ruby 2 version. And we see this is our default, but not current. Okay, so let's change uh, Ruby version so it you so RVM uses version two. So we do it by typing RVM use 2.0.0. Enter. 
There we go. So our VM list should give us that our Ruby 2.0 is now current and default. That's great. So the next step would be to install Rails. And that is very, very easy. Uh, and we do it by typing gem install Rails. This can also take a while, so please, please be patient. Okay, this is taking way too long, so I'm going to cancel uh, installation of documentation. Okay, but that's already gave us Rails, so everything is, should work uh, for now. So only the documentation is going to be no good. So uh, let's try creating new Rails application and make sure that everything works. So let's see where we are and go CD into documents. Okay, and let's uh, create a new folder, Rails Apps, okay, CD into Rails Apps, okay, and let's generate new application. So Rails New Sample App. You really give any name you want here, uh, I'm going to say Sample App for now, but in the next tutorial, we're going to create the actual application. So let's run that and see if it works. And it did for the most part. And what happens now is the bundler will install all the dependencies. So that may also take a while, uh, especially if you do it for the first time. Uh, just be patient. And once that's done, we should have the, the direct restructure of the Rails application. Also, if you go back here, okay, and uh, too far, too far, too far. If you go back here, you'll see that it's installing Rails 4. That's what we're looking for. We want Rails 4 or something newer, depending on when you're watching this tutorial. The current version now is 4, but it may be updated by the time you get to see this. Um, okay, so it's running and it's going to take a couple minutes again. Just to give you a perspective, um, the whole tutorial, I'm going to cut some uh, some waiting time out just to give you how long this may take in your case. Uh, for me, it's been already 47 minutes. It's because I had some trouble compiling the documentation. But downloading each part of uh, the software can take really, really long time. So don't get discouraged. Get yourself a cup of coffee and just uh, and just wait a little bit. and you should be just fine. Don't panic if you see um, if you see download stuck at some point. If your connection is good, it's gonna it's gonna work just fine. If you're in China, um, try it without VPN. And if it doesn't work, then try. If you I'm using Astro, uh, try to run it in the stealth mode if you have an access to it, because the normal VPN will just um, may not work. So um, yeah, so make sure that you have a stealth mode if if uh, if it doesn't work without VPN. Okay, so let's wait a second until this is done. Okay, it's done, uh, and we have our Rails ready to go. So let's CD into oh, let's see what our, our sample app. Let's CD into sample app. Okay. And see, oh, there we go. There is a whole bunch of stuff inside of that folder. And we should already be able to run our application. So let's run it. Rails S or server. Okay, or S for short. That's also going to work. There we go. We're running a WebBrick server, Rails for application. And it's going to be running on localhost. Okay, we can replace this with localhost port. 3000. Okay, if you want to close it, we just run Control C uh, on your key keyboard and it should work. Okay, so let's try opening it. Uh, let's 
go to our web browser and go to localhost column 3000 okay it's gonna work how cool is that there we go this is our default page and our application is running on port 3000 so you can also replace localhost with 0.0.0.0 and that also should work and it does as advertised okay thank you guys for now and see you in the next video